Today we're gonna to be replacing this on that because of this. Now the rattle noise you just heard was this part, but worn out. This is the variable valve timing actuator. This component allows the camshaft to adjust timing using solenoids and oil pressure to make that adjustment. Now you can see in the back of this cam gear, there's actually oil passages in here that allows this to actuate and adjust. Now not only is this a common thing on Hondas with this actuator going bad, but it's also common on a lot of other vehicles with things known as phasers or any actuating gears just like this one. Now the rattling noise as you just heard is probably one of the most common symptoms that you hear with these things going bad. However, they can also jump timing and do damage to the engine and potentially break, which you don't want to happen. And in some instances, you can get a check engine light and some misfiring codes and some timing codes due to this thing being faulty as well. The actuator I'm replacing today is going to be on a 2014 Honda CRV, but the same process will apply with any K-series Honda engine. Now, one of the biggest tips that I cannot stress enough before we start ripping in this thing is you have to, have to, have to get a Honda quality OEM actuator to replace with these things. Now there's a bunch of other companies out there aftermarket supporting these that do not hold up to the quality of the OEM manufacturer. There's cheap knockoff ones you can get on Amazon and Dorman makes them as well and they just do not hold up and you'll have problems with the same rattling issue within a short period of time. And also if you're buying these be aware of scammers especially on eBay they list their product as Honda and they're definitely not Honda and they're a third of the cost. This one actually cost me close to $400. So they're not a cheap part, but if you get the ones from Honda, guarantee it will last. Now we are trying to stay on a limited budget with this engine. So we don't know the condition until we get it apart. And fingers crossed that we only have to replace the actuator and nothing with the timing chain and components and tensioner, things of that nature. But we only know when we get it apart. Now, as we begin, we wanna take some compressed air or if you have the access to a vacuum to just suck up some of the debris so none of that stuff is going to fall into the engine once we take off that valve cover. Now, first up, we gotta get this coil pack cover removed and then we can blow up some more debris from there. We'll loosen the bolts up for the ignition coils and one by one, pull the ignition coils out of their positions. Pull off one of the PCB hoses on the back of the valve cover. Then we can begin to remove the nuts for the valve cover that hold it down and then pry it up slowly and then we can grab it and then pull it up out of the way. Now we can see everything. Now with the valve cover removed, you can see where the actuator lives right here on the intake camshaft. Now if your hope is just to replace this actuator, it's very important to check things like your guides here, here, and back there, as well as the gear and the chain for wear and stretching. I'm also going to need to remove this front wheel so I can gain access to the tensioner so I can release the tension from the chain. And getting a good visual of that tensioner is another good indication of chain stretch and whether or not we need to replace the chain and tensioner and guides. Now since my hoist is currently occupied, we're gonna be jacking this up and always use a jack stand. And then we're gonna remove the wheel, remove these plastic clips from the splash shield, and then we have access to the tensioner cover, which is just three bolts and we slowly pry it up and we can pull it out of the way. Now, as you can see, this is the tensioner cover plate that bolts to the timing cover. And now right here is the timing chain tensioner. Now the next step is to get this engine to top dead center. So we wanna rotate the crankshaft and there's timing marks on this pulley. We wanna to bring to the arrow on the timing cover right up here. So we're gonna slowly rotate the engine over. And now you can see a first set of timing marks. And then we're gonna keep going past that. Now you'll see a second set of timing marks. And what you're going after is right here, this white timing mark, which would be your top dead center. Now when you're rotating the crankshaft, you also wanna pay attention to the camshafts to make sure they line up. And right here, you can see we have a line here. And we also have a line on this one that we need to match these two cams up, as well as two dots on both cams that should be pointing up. So let's rotate the crank and get these in line. And just like that, you can see those two marks are in line with each other. Now I did put my camera down there to help show the exact mark because it's kind of hard to get my big camera in there. But here's where the arrow is, and that is the white dot on the crankshaft pulley that needs to be lined up to your camshaft gears. Now, next up, I wanna rotate this crankshaft just slightly backwards so I can put tension against that tensioner. And there's a little pin, which I'll show you in a second here, that we can put in place. So let me rotate this backwards just a hair, like so. And now looking underneath, you can take a pin and put it right in this little slot when these line up, just like that, and it'll lock the tensioner in place. All right, now I can remove this upper guide. Then I am gonna go ahead and make 
a little mark on the chain and the cam on both sides to help me line it up when I go back together here. Now, by having these extra marks here, this can ensure that I'm gonna be timed up when I put it back together. Now, I am gonna sling a couple of zip ties through this back cam sprocket, but this way we're not gonna lose the chain position in the event that it falls. And I might put a bungee here to help hold some tension so we can actually get this thing removed. Now we can remove this bolt on the actuator like so. We gotta hold the cam right here. There's a hex on the cam where you can get a wrench on it. Try to loosen this thing up and it's gonna be on there. You get a bigger breaker bar. You got a pipe for leverage. And there we go. Now I can back this bolt out the rest of the way. Now the same thing is going to apply to the exhaust cam. There. Good. Just like that. Get that bolt out of the way. Now I got another bungee on the exhaust sprocket to keep the tension on that. So I'm going to pull this sprocket out and then we'll get this sprocket out. And just like that, we now have the VVT actuator removed. Slowly work this exhaust cam gear off. All right, it's important to note that these are the same unit. This is a genuine OEM Honda actuator. And the only thing you can see that's different here is right here, there's a clocking position. And the reason that this is off is this is unlocked and this is locked. Now you have to lock this thing after it's torqued down because if you torqued it down with the locking pin in the position, you would break that pin and this thing wouldn't work anymore so you wouldn't be able to use it. So you have to torque that and then you have to clock this gear to the lock position once it's fully torqued. So let's do that now, let's get this in place. Now with this exhaust gear up out of the way, I could try to get this gear back in place so we can get it torqued down. Now these are keyed, so you just need to rotate this thing until it falls in the groove, like so. So right now we are in the groove and we can put the bolt back in. Now I do have some Loctite on my new bolt here. Just gonna put a little bit of oil on this thing. And now with that bolt hand tight, we need to torque it down to 83 foot-pounds according to manufacturer specs. Ugh. And 83 foot-pounds. All right, now with that bolt torque, we can move this cam to the lock position. And all we gotta do is go until we hear a click. Just like that. And now the cam gear is in the lock position. All right, now we need to get this chain back onto this gear. This is gonna be a little bit of a difficult task, but we gotta just, we got that mark on there that we wanna line up. Get this lined up here. Like so, now we gotta try to rock this cam gear back into place, which might be the struggler here. Now I know it's tough to see, but just keep forward pressure on it and keep rocking the cam until it's in place. And then we torque it to 53 foot pounds on the exhaust sprocket, just like that, torqued. Now, once both sprockets are in place, locked, torqued, all that stuff, we wanna make sure that our timing is directly on again. Now, as you can see here, the crankshaft mark is right on the money, and both the marks we made on the timing chain and the gears are in the right spot, as well as those two lines right there, they are lined up in perfect order. Now I can reinstall the guide on top here. Now these two bolts get torqued down to 16 foot-pounds, and this longer one goes up in the back here. 16. Now I can go ahead and cut these zip ties out of the way. Now I can go and remove this pin out of the way for the tensioner. Now I'm gonna crank the engine over by hand just to make sure we're not hitting anything or it feels abnormal. Now I can go ahead and scrape off all this old gasket so we can get our new gasket into place. Now we're gonna clean up any material that's on the timing cover as well, but we're gonna cover this tensioner in this hole up so we don't drop anything inside of it. And once we got a nice bead laid on this, we can go and reassemble it. Now next up, I can go ahead and install this valve cover gasket. There's a couple little grommets that you gotta put in there too that go over the spark plug tubes. And you don't wanna forget doing those because if those leak, they'll leak oil down into the spark plug tube and fall up the coil packs. So let me show you how to get those out. So on this, I'm just gonna use a seal puller and you just gotta get in a groove. Don't go too deep because you don't wanna mar up the surface of the valve cover. And just work your way around it like ever so. And just like that, they pop right out. Now we can just pop the new ones back in place. I push in like so. And then once those are seated, we can install our new outer gasket. Now the last thing I wanna do is just wipe around the edges to make sure that's all nice and clean. So we can get that gasket cleaned up. And there's two spots in the front. You gotta add a little RTV where the timing cover meets the engine. And the same thing in the back right here in the corner and then there in the corner. Now the valve cover can be reinstalled. We also have brand new mounting grommets as well. Reinstall our coil packs. We 
reinstall this hose and then the two bolts that hold this back bracket on. Reinstall the coil pack cover. Now I can go ahead and reinstall this skid plate. Gonna drain the oil and get some fresh oil put into the engine. And we're gonna just check it and top it up. Install the wheel. And always remember to hand torque all your lug nuts every time you loosen it. All right, now for the moment of truth. Will it rattle when we start up? Let's find out. And now it sounds pretty dang good when we fire this thing up. So I would say that's a confirmed fix. All right, now the last thing we wanna go do is test drive it and make sure everything is normal and there's no check engine lights that come on. Now the car seems to run great and it's shifting fine. Accelerates, RPMs look good no check engine light, and I would say this is a confirmed repair fix. And that is how you replace the VVT actuator on the K-Series Honda engine. Now, if you have the means to do the whole timing kit, the timing chain, the guides, the tensioner, and then you have to reseal the timing cover because all that has to come off, it's a little bit more tedious, but if you have the means to do it, I highly recommend doing it that way, just due to the amount of wear that all these components can take from higher mileage engine, especially when you have a rattling VVT actuator that doesn't help matters very much. Also, I'm a big fan of using OEM parts on this job in particular, just so you don't run into future issues by using the lower grade parts. So the OEM Honda number on this one is 14310R5A305. And as always, hopefully this video helps you repair this same job on your vehicle, or hopefully it helped you learn something about these vehicles. We will catch you in the next video.